What is that one magic button when turned on makes your render look amazing and picture perfect? What is that one magic button that will put end to your misery of not getting expected results? Unfortunately, there is no magic button in rendering. What? What the f But there are three things. Things when done correctly will improve your rendering exponentially. After those three things, render settings are just a matter of preference. Those three main aspects of any render are lighting, materials, and using correct assets. We have covered some of these aspects in our previous videos. If you are not clear, please pause this video, go watch that and come back. Now that you have watched that, let's say you have a model with all three aspects covered. With that model, let's jump into the V-Ray render settings. Usually rendering is done for two major reasons. Interactive render and production render. Interactive renders are done while working on the model to see the smaller changes individually or to see the changes before creating production render. Let's open up the asset editor and select settings. This is the place where we can find all the settings that we need. Let's begin from the top. We have three engine preferences in V-Ray. Basically, these are hardware elements that power the render process. If your CPU is more powerful, select CPU. If you have graphics card, select CUDA. And if you have RTX powered graphics card, select RTX. I have a very good CPU, therefore I'm going to select CPU. Next, we have a toggle for interactive. We need to keep this on for interactive render. Next option, we have interactivity. This slider dictates how responsive the interactive render is. Lower the value, lower the interactivity. Let's skip the denoiser for now. Let's not change anything in the camera option. Let's get to render output option. Turn on the safe frame toggle. It provides a visual cue in the viewport showing the render output area. We can now set the resolution of the image here. Usually for interactive render, higher resolution value of 600 is what I use. Now press start interactive render button. These are the settings for interactive renders. Now let's jump into production render. Production renders are higher quality render that we usually see on the internet. These renders take more time and are of higher resolution and lower noise level. For this first thing, we need to turn off the interactive render option. Turning off this option gives us some extra options to look into. Turning on progressive option will enable progressive sampling mode in which the render image will keep rendering till we reach certain noise level or time limit. Turning off this option will put the render engine to bucket rendering mode. I prefer this bucket mode over progressive mode for final production renders. Let's keep the quality at medium plus or high. Anything more than that does not make a huge difference for the most part. Turn on denoiser and select V-Ray denoiser. As far as the resolution we need to have minimum resolution of the screen, it is going to be viewed in this case we shall keep it at 1920 by 1080, which is basic resolution of most of the screens. You might ask you left out this button on the right. If these above settings doesn't bring you expected results, then anything under this menu won't bring you closer to the expected results. Basically, these quality presets are created by V-Ray with changing these settings for beginners. We will cover these settings elaborately in a future video for advanced users. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, happy rendering.